Hi, I'm Sal McCagliano, Associate Professor of History at Campbell University in beautiful North Carolina, a uh, former Merchant Mariner and a Adjunct Professor of Maritime Industry Policy at the U.S. Merchant Marine Academy. Welcome to this episode of What's Going On the Suez. So April 10th, uh, we got some uh, new developments, uh, nothing significant, but there are some things that we should probably talk about. So first off, here you go, Ever Given still located in the Suez right now. She is uh, standing by there uh, at Anchorage. There's another vessel anchored by our heavy lift vessel, but they will have nothing to do with what's going on with Ever Given. Uh, there's not a heavy vessel, a heavy lift vessel in the world that can uh, pick up Ever Given. So Ever Given is still sitting there. The Egyptians are still making this uh, d discussion that they want a billion dollars to let the vessel go. Uh, but she is sitting there right now waiting to go. Thought I'd take a second here and real quick, show you what else is going on so normal passages through the suez are ongoing so here is the southbound convoy uh coming in right now we see her kind of coming in the con convoy right now Let's see if i get this moved a bit Let's see if we can move ourselves around here a bit and get ourselves there we go so the northbound convoy is coming in uh led by a livestock carrier el farouk coming in uh, you'll see the other vessels coming in through the canal right now. Uh, De Ling, a, a, a Chinese general cargo vessel, uh, chemical tanker, Venus coming in. Uh, and these are all the, uh, um, uh, this is the northbound, excuse me, northbound convoy uh, coming in. You'll see them all coming in. Uh, they've got the smaller general cargo and tankers leading the way uh, coming up. Something a little bit different than what we've seen in the past, actually. Uh, usually you'd see the big container ships uh, leading them in. But here again, we've got a smaller group coming in, coming in, batch of livestock carriers coming in. These are all heading northbound. Here's the anchorage off of uh, Suez right now, uh, seeing the vessels head in. If we head north to Port Said, we'll see, yep, here's the southbound convoy coming down right now. So again, led by general cargo vessels right now, Batch of general cargo vessels coming in. Uh, red red ones are usually tankers coming in. Let's see if we can get that there. Sorry, I got ads popping up. Let's see if we can get those. There you go. So there you go. There, there's uh, tankers coming in. Bow Sirius right there. Uh, Norwegian coming in. Stolt Glory, Liberian flag heading southbound. Uh, other ships coming in. Let's see what else we got here. The green ones usually are cargo vessels. Yep, bulk carriers coming down. Yep, more bulk carriers coming down. That's a green one right there. And then out here at the anchorage, I, I noticed this a little while ago. Let's see if we can see it right here. Let's see, here she's coming down right now. Uh, these guys are starting to maneuver around. They are picking up their uh, anchors right now. So one of the things that they'll start to do is, is start roaming around up here. So here are the big container ships. Here's uh, Madrid Maersk, Port Said heading for Singapore. She's got her anchor up. They'll start milling around here, waiting to get permission to come in. The Mycion, let's see, uh, these are the other big container ships. These are all the ones that had gone through earlier. And now sometimes they move around a bit. It's hard to get them, there you go. Madeline Ma uh, Mathalita Maersk, there you go. Here's a CM, CGA, Alma Vida. Let's see, Mega Benevit. She came through the canal actually. So uh, she's waiting to clear right now. There we go. Another one of the CMA big vessels heading out. So there you go, uh, Suez is moving. Uh, the anchorages have basically returned back to fairly normal right now. So it seems as if everything's moving, unknown when we will see Ever Given kind of move out of there. So I wanted to show you this too. This is a story that was in G Captain. Uh, it's a Reuters story talking about reinsurers set to bear brunt of costs for Suez Canal grounding. So all vessels have two types of insurance. There's H&M, which is hull and machinery, and then there's P&I, protection and indemnity insurance. And so as you see here, uh, ship typically have P&I insurance covers third-party liability claims, including environmental damage and injury. And that's separate from their hull and machinery. 
So story goes here, Alec McKinnon, chief claims officer for the UK club, which is the provider for Evergiven's P&I. And you should understand a couple of things here. Uh, Evergreen is the operating company. Uh, they are the operating company, big operating company. But they lease this vessel uh, as part of an agreement. It's actually owned by a Japanese owner. And then there's a German operating company that, that basically crews the vessel and takes care of the day-to-day running of the vessel. So there's a lot of issues associated with this. Uh, so anyway, the UK club, which is the P&I club for them, said so expect a claim against the ship's owner from the canal authorities for possible damage. So obviously, as of yet, the uh, Suez have not filed that claim yet, that $1 billion claim we keep talking about. Uh, they expect to uh, receive a claim. But this is the part I want to tell you, uh, I thought was really interesting here. We already talked about this, that the Suez Canal is talking about that $1 billion. The UK club will cover the first $10 million of losses. Beyond that, a wider pool of P&I insurers will cover up to $100 million. So P&I clubs are exactly that. They're clubs. There's a larger P&I insurance group. And what they do is above a certain level, they pool their resources together. So in other words, even a P&I club would have insurance on its insurance. And that insurance is provided by these other clubs. Uh, once you go beyond the 100 millions, the reissuers such as Lloyd's of London step in and they cover up to $2.1 billion worth of claims. And then P&I insurers will contribute for part of a further $1 billion of cover. So they can go up to the max, basically what they have for coverage is $3.1 billion. Uh, and as the uh, representative for the UK club says, we are confident we are not in that territory at all. They're being very optimistic. Uh, there is no telling how much the insurance liabilities for the vessel being late and causing other vessels to be late will be leveled against the ever given, especially if it's found to be mechanical or uh, human error in this case. Uh, the Holland Machinery is through a Japanese firm and they cover up to 100 to 140 million, but that's for the, the ship itself. That's the damage to the vessel, any damage done to it. So anyway, that is the P&I and the H&M coverage right there. So up to $3.1 billion uh, can be covered through P&I as it exists now. The problem is if it goes above that, how do they cover that and what happens? Uh, there was a great post uh, on LinkedIn by um, uh, Jan Hoffman. Jan Hoffman is, uh, works for the UN uh, uh, UNCTAD. Uh, th this is the uh, UN uh, Committee on Trade and, 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 and Development, uh, Committee on Development. And he helps put together the review of maritime transport every year. I, I talked about this in an earlier episode. Uh, great document, talks all about basically um, global shipping. It's, it's the, it's the go-to guide when you, when you look at global shipping. Anyway, he put this out here. This is his costs uh, incurred by the Ever Given. I thought it was really interesting. So I just want to read a couple of things he has here. So he has in, in all of global trade, basically global trade in general, uh, at the at the uh, seventeen point five eight trillion dollar mark. I think it's trillion, billion, billion. Yep, trillion. Five point eight two trillion dollars. That's how much global trade is. Seventy five percent of that is handled on the maritime side. That's twelve point three trillion dollars. Uh, 21.7 goes through the Suez. Now you heard something about 12% of global trade goes through. That'd be 12% uh, of the uh, of, of the original 17.5 trillion. Uh, what he's taking here is 21.7% of just the maritime trade. That's why that number is what it is. Uh, annual trade is 2.67 trillion. That's going through the Suez. That's taking that number, dividing it by 365. Uh, the daily trade through the Suez, uh, now we're getting down to more, much more reasonable numbers here, only $7.3 billion uh, going through. And that was that average we kept hearing anywhere from seven to $10 billion going through. Uh, 10 days worth of trade was affected. So that's $73 billion was affected. Uh, the average delay uh, uh, in days was about five, he figured. Uh, in terms of the closures and everything being affected, that comes out to be three hundred and sixty-five uh, billion dollars, right there. Again, I'm checking my way. Yep, billion. That's uh, basically 0. 0.6 of the value of trade. That comes down to uh, a cost in trade of somewhere in the range of two point two trillion dollars. 
and the value of time per day is roughly 3.7 trillion. I'll have a link to this uh, in the uh, show notes so you can take a look at it. I think it's an interesting uh, aspect. Again, it, people are always asking how much this is going to cost. And here, Jan Huffman kind of puts that together for us to take a look at. Is that what the cost is going to be? Who knows? Uh, there's no telling. Uh, we, we just don't know right now. Uh, as long as Ever Given is, is uh, sitting there in, in the lake until she's released by the Egyptians and she can get her cargo offloaded and get into a dry dock, obviously that cargo is going to be on hold for right now. And we're still feeling or starting to feel the impacts here of what's going on. I mentioned to you the other day, a story in G Captain here, where uh, uh, it is right here. Here we go. Suez uh, ripples raises rates for all container ships. So again, we, we're, we're seeing that kind of play out right now. So we're going to see the impact. Don't know what the impact's going to be. Uh, so uh, we'll have to just stay tuned. Uh, tomorrow, Sunday, April 11th, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I told you about once a week, I want to do something a little different on my uh, podcast here, webcast, YouTube, kit, whatever we want to call this. So I'm going to go back and look at the top stories from 2020. G Captain did this great retrospective on the top stories of 2020. Everyone seems to have an interest in maritime right now. So let's go back and look at 2020, how this set up for us, where we're at today. So I thought that'd be a good little retrospective. It's fun. Uh, it's 10 things uh, and, and give you a little uh, a tidbit on that. We'll talk about that a little bit uh, for tomorrow's uh, presentation. So I uh, hope you enjoy the video. Uh, again, as always, if you like it, subscribe. My, uh, I, I want to thank everybody for subscribing. My, my subscri subscriptions are going through the roof. Uh, it's great. Over 2,000 subscribers right now. Uh, if you like the video, please thumbs up. You know, always like it. Share it with a friend. Please do. And everything like that. Uh, I am trying to be as level-headed with everyone as I can. I try to present my evidence based on facts I have in front of me. Uh, I know there's a lot of sus uh, a lot of suspicions about Ever Given out there, and I just want to be clear. I, I respect everyone's right to have an opinion. I, I really do. Uh, you're perfectly entitled to that. Uh, however, I, I you know being the college professor I am. I do like decorum. I do like uh, uh, professionalism. And, and so I try to keep it civil uh, in, 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 in comments and everything. Uh, I, I, you know, if you have evidence, I'm always happy to hear it. Uh, always happy to hear that. Uh, but again, uh, I, I think there's, there's a lot of suppositions about this vessel that just there's no substantial proof by it. I know there's Facebook pages. And I know there's, there's other people on YouTube who are telling you things about these, this vessel. Uh, again, Evergreen is a long company. It's been around since 1969. I'm, I'm happy to send you the annual reports and the shareholders' stock information, which is public knowledge to everybody. Uh, this vessel did not sail anything different than everybody else. You just saw all those container ships heading through the Suez right there. This is routine. Vessels like this go through all the time. Uh, and it just so happens that this one was involved in an accident that shut the Suez for six days. Uh, I don't know what caused it. We don't know what caused it. It could be mechanical. It could be human. It could be weather. Uh, we will find out. The answer will be found out. I guarantee you that. Uh, it's just a matter of time. These investigations take a long time because of insurance and, and a whole variety of issues associated with it. So anyway, that was it. Thanks again.